All right, so we got a 3032E with whole mess of wood chips up around the ECU. Complaint is throwing a code. We got our ECT code, exhaust filter cleaning inhibited. Uh, this is the one we're concerned with. Cam signal invalid, missing, and signals out of sync. And then our good old message receipt, no message received from source address one, and vehicle control and communications error. All stored right now, but it will go active on this, this, and this. So, let's see if we can get you guys here. On the... We got five volt on the power supply, leading out to the cam sensor, and then if we switch over, give me a second here. There we go. And fire her up. Cam signal. Click OK. So we got skinny, larger, largest, which known good. Skinny, larger, largest. Notice here though we have a zero to five, but over here. We have a 0 to 3.85. And we already confirmed we have 5 volt ref. I already confirmed the ground was good. So we need a cam sensor here. Simple as that. All right, so all we did in that video was just check out our cam sensor. That was our primary code, our 5224102, uh, 5224105, and then uh, same code 07 which was signal invalid, signal missing, and signals out of sync. We didn't go to a cam crank correlation because as we saw once we pulled the, uh, pulled the scope pattern, we saw it was zero to barely four volts, was hitting the ground at zero, so it was fully pulling the ground, but we weren't getting a full switch zero to five. And as that machine got hotter, it actually did start to drop out more. Uh, I don't really like taking a bunch of time to do videos while I'm trying to get a customer up and running So I just ran you guys through the short part So right here, we're gonna discuss some of these trouble codes and why I went the direction I went and ignored some of them All right, so first code which we had two stored counts was our 11000 engine coolant temperature signal extremely high so what were we at 230 degrees wasn't super concerned because these things get plugged up with uh, all sorts of hay and grass and everything else up in the radiator which is what happened to this one now here are 3695.14 cleaning inhibited by op by a op interface if we look here we have 126 counts which corresponds to our 126 counts of cam position seg signal invalid so because the ECU doesn't have finite enough control over the engine operation without its cam signal, it actually throws a code that will prevent regeneration from happening. So that one I wasn't concerned about because that's directly related to our cam signal issues. And then our good old 5225-9609, no can message received from source address one and vehicle controller communications error. So wasn't super concerned about those two stored counts and a count of 10 there. Let's see if the, yeah, so nothing super exciting there as far as our freeze frame. Honestly, I didn't even look at it at the time, but wasn't concerned. Don't know the previous history of this tractor. These very well, I've seen these stuck in tractors since they were brand new if somebody during PDI didn't clear them out. So, not a big deal. 
but here if you guys want to see some fun so there's our 522-61909 code YDPFIF reception timeout error can message failure how's that for code set criteria my assumption is operator control source address or you know message identifier D1 response byte 8-bit pair 34 abnormal update rate that makes a lot of sense diagnose can system using multimeter no programming control units yeah no and that follows our 522 that's our source address one bunch more gobbledygook multimeter diagnosis reprogram and camshaft position signal now we could have gone through this whole test procedure if we didn't have a scope read DTCs disconnect the sensor bad idea do a terminal check then do an open circuit supply circuit check same thing here another circuit check terminal checks again wire to wire continuity short to ground check wiring harness physical damage physical damage terminal checks again at the ECU um, I don't think I showed it in the video but I did in fact check the uh, cam sensor wires both right there in the harness at the cam sensor or just after the cam sensor and up under the ECU signal was good both ways and then here's another one here's our op interface reset regeneration prohibition inhibit switch special instructions well it doesn't have a light control module on this tractor and it's all done in the ECU nowhere do they tell you that codes like that cam sensor code will cause this but I'm gonna tell you any kind of uh, air throttle EGR valve cam sensor crank sensor um, basically almost any sensor on that engine short of engine coolant temperature and oil temperature are gonna inhibit the regen from happening but if you're not paying attention while you're reading those codes you're gonna think it's the operator hitting that switch so uh, other than that uh, while I was in there, I did do, let's see if I can pull it back here. Oh yeah, here, we can do our load profile. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this yet, I don't think I've shown it in a video. This is how the machine was operated. 600 to 2800 RPM, 0 to 90% load. 5 hours at 0 load, idling, 14, 13, I mean, this is, this is all bad, this... This is a lightly used machine. It's, it really should be. We want to see most of our operation up around here. So, just for future reference, run it hard. You're not going to break nothing. And then we also did, if it, uh, there we are. We did do a reprogramming event. So we did that. But uh, maybe I'll throw a video up of that. It's like four or five minutes long. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw that up after this. So, hopefully you guys can see that just using basic operations and everything else. Alright, so once again, just, I know this video is long, but just keep to the basics. Don't get overwhelmed. Try to come to a logical conclusion about how the codes are interrelated. If you're not 100% sure, look at something like code counts. If you have two separate codes... And they're occurring, they have the same amount of counts. There's a good good chance one is causing the other. Or they're related circuits. Um, use logic. Get known good waveforms. I mean, I've looked all over. I think I found like maybe five John Deere waveforms. And everywhere I've searched. So when you're working on vehicles, if you got known goods, you got a little bit of time, take some known goods. Catalog them, document them do whatever you need to do and that's it um i might throw up the icc reprogramming video right after this it had a software update available and i was there so i decided to do it um yeah so keep an eye out for that one it's five minutes long nothing super exciting but in case you've never seen the procedure it might be interesting have a good one